What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23, coming to you today with a uh, solo Mass Effect 3 uh, playthrough on the multiplayer here. Uh, today we're going to be using the Asari Vanguard, and we're on bronze against the Geth on Firebase Jade. Uh, now this series is going to be a little bit different, I'm not going to commentate through the entire thing, I'm just going to go ahead and give a few pointers at the beginning and then kind of let you guys watch the gameplay. Uh, now the reason I'm doing these is... I actually am going through and working on the Lone Wolf achievement for Mass Effect 3 multiplayer where you basically have a set number of solo missions you have to complete. Now, the multiplayer can be pretty difficult because this is designed for four players. Uh, most of the time you're, you're supposed to be playing on a team of two to four players. So you can try to solo this and uh, it's very difficult to do, even on the bronze level, unless you're a very good player, which I don't consider myself to be like an elite player at Mass Effect 3. I think I'm pretty decent, but I'm, I don't think I'm that great. Uh, but this is a fun challenge. Uh, it can be frustrating, I will say that, because, uh, like I said, this is designed for two to four people and you're trying to solo it, so it can be a little difficult at times. It can be very frustrating. You can sometimes die quite a bit. Uh, but don't get discouraged if that happens to you. The way I look at trying to solo uh, in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer is basically it's a good chance for you to learn how to use your character to their strongest skills. It's a good chance for you to work on your overall game, and just it makes you a lot better as a team player when you get into a four, you know, two to four player situation because you've been able to solo some of the maps and some of the enemies in the multiplayer. Uh, it just helps you get better overall as a player. Uh, so on Firebase Jade here, I'm going to be running with a shotgun, the M27 Shimitar, and I'm using uh, her lift grenades. I'm going to be spamming those quite a bit because they are an absolutely amazing uh, thing you get in this game. Now, one thing I will I will tell you guys on solo, like I said, you may die quite a bit, especially if you haven't tried it very often. There's a few things that are going to really uh, kind of determine how well you can do based on luck uh, when you're running through here. And that is going to be uh, wave three, wave six and wave ten. Those are the objective waves in the multiplayer. Of course, wave eleven is your extraction wave. Uh, it's going to be kind of luck of the draw, what you get for those objective waves. You can see here on this third wave, I got the devices. And that device that I was trying to do right off the bat, everybody was like surrounding it. It was completely surrounded by guests, so I had no chance to even start doing it. And you have a five minute timer on these rounds. So it can be a little bit frustrating. It can make you panic a little bit because you want to go and get those devices enabled. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is sometimes you have to run away. You just have to, no matter how, how badly you want to try to get that. Uh, you have to, to kind of retreat, and one of the reasons is because what will happen in the, this uh, multiplayer is the enemies will follow you around the map. So what you want to do if you're in one of these, uh, like if you get devices, uh, what you can do is you can go kind of camp in one section of the map, get all the enemies to kind of float over towards you, circle back to that objective, and hopefully it will be clear. Now this wave I do have quite a bit of trouble. I only I get right down about 30 seconds left at the end, but I do manage to do it without dying, which is an accomplishment for me, because normally on these I have to waste a lot of meta gels and shield recharges, because uh, it's just very hard, especially on these smaller maps, to get into a clear space where you can actually uh, do the device waves. Another really difficult objective wave can be if you get uh, kill four targets, because you still only start off with 30 seconds, and of course you get more time based on how many of those targets you take out. And then the other um, really difficult objective waves are if you get an escort mission, because with that escort you actually have to go out in the open and take the uh, escort drone to its um, objective position. That's going to leave you open for a lot of attacks from all the enemies. And again, same thing there, you can kind of run off and leave the drone there and come back to it, draw the enemies away from it. That is definitely a strategy you will have to use from time to time. The same thing goes, you'll see later on in this one, I get a hacking mission. Uh, the hack will you'll have five minutes to complete it. So again, if you need to retreat and run to the other side of the map, draw the enemies away from you and come circle back around, you definitely will have time to do that comfortably within that five minute uh, space of time. So just one of my main tips here, guys, is just on these objective waves, try not to panic too much. Um, you know, try to clear those enemies out. You can see here again, it's just really difficult. We've got These guys are all over me and I just have to keep popping up. Even though it's gonna reset that objective, I have to just keep popping up and keep trying to kill these guys off. Uh, before I can get to this safely or else I'm definitely going to die. Now I do play, this, this round was kind of sloppy for me. Uh, luckily I am playing a Vanguard class which can allow you to make a lot of mistakes because you can basically, as long as your uh, uh, shield recharge is there and you've got the uh, biotic charge, you can basically just spam it and recharge your shields completely even if you're about to die. So even if you're on that last sliver of health, you'll see me do that a lot this match. 
I'll just jump in my biotic charge and uh, hit the hit the enemy and I'll recharge my shields completely and pretty much save my butt several times here. So uh, playing a little sloppy. This is my first bronze solo I've done in a long time since I've been playing Mass Effect 3. And I believe I've completed four so far. I have six more to go on bronze. Then I have to do uh, five on silver, two on gold, and, and one on platinum. You can do it either or. There's four categories for the lone wolf achievement. Uh, the first is the solo 10 bronze matches. The second is the solo five silver matches. Third is uh, to solo two gold matches. And the final is to solo one platinum match. Now, you only have to do three of the four. So more likely in my case, it's not going to be the platinum one because platinum is really difficult in this game. And I've yet to do that. Uh, now, there are a lot of people who can solo platinum. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be an elite player at this game. I, I just enjoy the multiplayer. I think I'm halfway decent and just thought I would try to bring you guys these videos in case you wanted to watch them, get, you know, maybe see how I play, maybe give you some tips and tricks and things and uh, just offer my general advice. Now, I'm going to be trying to use some of the starting off characters that you get, to, to especially to do these bronze solos, because I want you guys to, uh, to kind of see how you can use those. And I know a lot of you may just be starting Mass Effect 3 multiplayer for the first time, so you may not have a lot of really good characters unlocked. So I definitely want to take the time to use some of those characters if I can, um, and try to do these solos so you can see that it can be done with some of those intro level characters, even though they might not have the greatest powers and health and fitness and type things. So that's what we're going to mainly try to do here. Um, I will say that it's good how how well you can solo especially on silver and gold is also going to be a little bit determined by what gear you have unlocked uh, one of my problems i have on on my account right now is i don't have maximum missiles unlocked i don't have maximum meta gel or maximum shield boosters unlocked so it's going to be a little difficult for me to do silver and gold uh, without having all of that equipment like i said i'm not an elite player at this game i know some people can solo without using any consumables there's some really amazing players out there um, but it's going, especially if you're first starting trying to solo these things, you're going to need to use your equipment. Uh, you're going to need to have decent weapons. You're going to need to have decent character classes. Um, you know, after you go above bronze. Bronze, you can solo with pretty much anything. I mean, actually, you can solo any difficulty with anything if you're that elite of a player. Uh, but for most of us, uh, you know, if you go up to silver and gold, you're going to have to have a little bit uh, better class of character unlocked. There's several characters in this game uh, that can really make even soloing pretty easy. Uh, some of the Krogan, the Geth Juggernaut, um, things like that. But I'm going to try not to, uh, I'm going to try to stay away from the kind of overpowered characters and kind of, like I said, give you guys a view of what you can do with the starting off characters. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me. Uh, guys, hopefully we'll enjoy the rest of the gameplay here as we uh, go through Firebase Jade here against the Geth. If you guys have any questions at all about Mass Effect 3 or the multiplayer in general, um, please feel free to leave comments below or check out some of my other guides I'm working on for Mass Effect 3. I thank you guys for watching, hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you again next time.